Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Cookies in Canvas for Kids. All right, so today we're painting Sunrise Over the Water, and I'm gonna be eating my popcorn peanut butter cookies. So let's paint our canvas and eat our cookies. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 canvas. You can certainly switch that up, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint. The colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, burnt umber, which I'll call brown. This is green oxide, fire red, and chrome yellow. And of course you can switch those up, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using four tools today. I'm gonna to be using number two pencil. I'm gonna be using three brushes, a half inch wide bristle brush, a number eight round brush, and a number one round brush. And I will refer to them as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And you can switch those up if you'd like. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes, and you'll also need a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below in the description of this video, I'm gonna be giving you a, a few things that you can use as um, resources. One of them is a link where you can purchase this entire paint kit. It's the exact materials that I'm using. It's convenient, it's affordable, all that good stuff. So that's there for you if you want. There's also a free downloadable link of the image of the final painting. So you can download that, print it, and use it as a visual reference, as well as step-by-step um, -step written instructions that you can print um, and use as you go along. But the most important thing that I have down in the description is a recipe for my delicious popcorn peanut butter cookies. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna do a sketch of our land and our water. I'm gonna be using my number two pencil. And how we're just gonna do this is I'm just gonna give you a couple of markers, where to mark them, and then we'll just make a line and we're just gonna consider this a whole bunch of lines and not worry if it's exactly like mine or not. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up on the left-hand side about a quarter of the way. And to know how to do that, you're gonna just kinda of eyeball about halfway and then you're gonna make a mark about halfway between here and here. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just close is good enough. And then I'm gonna go up maybe about an inch and make another mark. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the right hand side. So about halfway, then about halfway between here and here, that's gonna be about a quarter of the way, and go up maybe about another inch. I'm gonna connect the top two with a, an arcing motion, it's gonna go up, what we're doing right now is we're outlining our water area, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for this bottom one, only I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. So it doesn't have to be a real drastic arc, just a little bit, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do for my next mark is I'm gonna come up on the left-hand side, maybe about two inches, and I'm gonna make myself a mark. And then I'm gonna come up between halfway between here and here, and make myself another mark. So I'm making two marks on this side, and then I'm gonna to go to the right and make two more marks. This one is gonna come up maybe about a third of the way between here and here. So maybe somewhere about here, which would kind of be about between these two, if you just kind of went straight over, boop, 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 that kind of gets you in the, in the vicinity. And then I'm gonna make one about maybe, I don't know, two, two more inches up here, a little bit higher than this one. So if you come straight over, da, 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 and then just go a little bit higher. This way we have uneven hills as we're doing this. I'm gonna make one more mark before we start um, drawing these lines. I'm gonna come straight down from my center, and then I'm gonna go over to the left, maybe about an inch or two, make myself a mark. So I'm gonna connect this mark to this mark here, with a roly-poly hill. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna come down, kind of like that, and then I'm gonna go back up, and then I'm gonna come back down. And again, yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but if you can get it somewhere in the vicinity, that's great. Then I'm gonna make myself a mark, maybe halfway down this hill, somewhere maybe about here. I'm gonna connect this mark to this mark with a big, hill. So this hill is probably going to come up almost as high as this. So it comes up pretty high and I'm just going to kind of scoop it up 
and then back down. And if you can get a little scoop down here at the end, great. If not, no big deal. Then I'm going to come down a little bit down the top of this one, right about maybe about an inch or so right here. I'm going to connect this to this with another hill. So I'm going to kind of scoop it and maybe something like that. I'm going to make one more here. So I'm going to come down this hill, maybe about halfway between here and here, make myself a mark. And I'm going to connect this mark to the one that we made up here. And again, I'm going to start with a kind of sloping a little bit and then coming up in a big, big bump. I'm going to make my bump go a little bit higher than my mark. And that's going to be our entire sketch. We're going to use our large brush for the next step. So after you get this done, put your pencil down, maybe take a bite of your cookie or your snack and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the first painting step is we're going to be painting our sky. This is kind of the first layer of the sky because we're going to put the sun on later, but we want to put a base on the sky. I'm going to be using my big brush. I'm going to be using blue and white paint, and I'm going to start at the top of my sky with blue and white, and I, I'm going to come down towards this area that I want to be almost white. So as I'm only going to pick up a little bit of blue, and white in the beginning, and then I'm probably not gonna pick up any more blue. I'm only gonna pick up white as I come towards here, and that's gonna make it lighter and lighter. But if you don't get it super light in here, don't worry about it, but if you can, that would be great. So I'm gonna start up at the top, just so I can see how dark my blue really is. And now, I'm not gonna pick up any more blue. I'm just, and I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up white. And what's going to happen is that blue will work its way off of my brush. And I'm just using like a left to right brush stroke. You could certainly do circles um, or dots or whatever you want, but I'm going to use a left to right brush stroke. And I'm going to, this first time, I'm going to kind of let myself almost run out of paint before I reload my brush. Um, so that way, most of the blue will work its way off of my brush and then I can just start picking up more white. You want to come all the way down to your pencil mark. You can even bump into your pencil mark a little bit. You'll still be able to see it underneath the paint, so don't worry about that. Now I'm just, again, just picking up white and what's going to happen is you're going to see it getting lighter and lighter as I come towards this area. So again, I'm reloading. I'm just picking up white and it's getting lighter and lighter as I go towards this area. And again, if yours doesn't come out exactly like mine, it's all right. We are gonna you know, be putting that big bright sun on there later, so know that that's gonna definitely steal the show. It'll be the star of the show. Um, and I, again, I'm just picking up white. If you feel by the time you're through going through here, if, you, if yours is still too blue for you, you can certainly either wipe your brush off on your paper towel or you can wash and dry your brush. So if you're overloaded with blue, just wash and dry your brush, pick up some white, and then you can start blending that white into the wet blue that's next to it. And then again, I'm just gonna kind of go into this center area trying to get it a little bit lighter than this exterior. And I'm just picking up more white. And you can see mine's getting lighter and lighter as I come in towards this area. And then we are gonna use this same brush for the next step, but you're gonna wanna wash it and dry it. So once you get this all nice and painted, hold on, I just wanna make sure that I've got everything blended and painted in nice here sometimes. It, you think that you got a spot and then you look back and it's like, oh wait, the paint's not there anymore. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing these little touch-ups here and maybe this looks like clouds flying by, floating by, or, you know, it's a nice beautiful summer day and it's really bright out. So, you know, that's, that's all I'm trying to get across here. And then again, I'm going to wash and dry this big brush in preparation for the next step. All right. So what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our hills. So this is your water and these four sections are your hills. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And I said them in that specific order because that's the order that you'll use them in. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna start it really dark at the bottom 
and I want every hill to be dark at the bottom and light at the top. And if you do that, you'll be able to see the separation in each one of these hills. So how I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start with a little, a very little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna start at this bottom because I know that this is water. I kind of want there to be a, a nice transition between the two. So I'm just gonna kind of skirt my brush back and forth. I don't want a clean line. So I'm just kind of kind of do this lightly across here. And you can see it's pretty messy. And then I'm not gonna pick up black again. The next colors I'm picking up are brown and green. And you can pick them both up at the same time on your brush. And now I'm gonna um, start with dotting. So I'm going to just be dabbing something like this. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a um, transition where it goes from this one to this one. So I'm not gonna do too much down here. I wanna leave that line so I know where I need to go lighter. And I'm still just kind of sitting at the bottom. And if you get a little bit in your water, don't worry about it. We'll be able to hide it when we go to um, paint the water. And as I'm dotting this, I'm doing a very uneven line. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want it to look natural. I don't want it to look like rows of colors. So now that I have the bottom area done with the darker colors, I wanna put a little bit of dark in these top two hills at the bottom of the hill. So I'm not picking up black, I'm just picking up green and brown. And I'm gonna start dotting at the bottom of these hills. So I've got that kind of started. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this one. And I'm staying kind of to the right on these two because my sun is gonna be here and that's what's gonna make that's what's gonna illuminate my hills. So now that I've got the darkness started, now I don't wash my brush, I'm just gonna start picking up green. So here I go, I'm picking up just green. And as I go up this hill, you're gonna see that it's gonna start to get lighter and lighter. And I kind of cross back over into that dark region so it blends a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on this hill here. I've got just green on my brush and I'm kind of crossing it over into the dark area so that way they look like they belong together but it's not a solid line. And I'm gonna do it over. I'm just repeating it on each hill. And then I've got this coming a little bit in there. Make sure that that's dark enough so you can see the difference. And then I'm gonna do this one over here. Oh, I like to paint the edges of my canvas too. So if you see me sneaking over here on the side, I'm not trying to hide or anything. <laughs> I'm just trying to paint the edges of my canvas. Um, and now I'm gonna start picking up, I'm not washing my brush, I'm gonna start picking up yellow and white. So yellow with a little bit of white. And this is gonna start, you're gonna see the hills start to come alive at this point. I think there's a movie about that. Um, and as I get towards the top, I'm gonna make it really, really light with more white. Um, so again, yellow and a little bit of white are what I'm working with right now. And these hills, they, I mean, you can make them as roly-poly as you want. You could make them as bright as you want or as dark as you want. Um, I'm making them like this because I live in the Berkshire Hills of Massachusetts, which look exactly like this. <laughs> they are all just rolling. They just roll for miles and miles and miles. And it's really cool because I get to get a lot of inspiration just by looking out my window. Um, and you might have the same kind of hills where you live, or maybe you dream of, you know, rolling down or sledding down one of these hills or, you know, having a picnic going out on going on a hike in one of these you know mountainous regions um but i'm just kind of continuing on here got to make sure i get this last hill you can see i'm leaving that tippy top of each hill because i'm going to want that to be the brightest so i'm just kind of working through these and now 
I am going to pick up even more white. So I have yellow with a bunch of white on my brush right now. And I wanna get this tippy top really, really, really bright because that sun is highlighting it. And it's just saying, you are awake, you're alive. We've got a whole bunch of sunshine just kissing the top of that hill. And I'm gonna do the same thing for all of them. My goal here is to make sure that I hide my pencil mark. So by the time I am done with this step, I don't wanna see any pencil marks on my, um, on my hills. And I wanna attempt to make sure that I can see the difference between all of my hills. So if you run into an area that is, you know, the top of one looks like the side of the other, then you just need to add contrast. So you need to make one lighter or one darker than the other one. So I might add just a little bit more green into this, just so you can kind of see, make sure you can see the difference between those two hills. And maybe this one is being shadowed by that one or something. Now I'm gonna go finish up these two with some yellow and a lot of white on my brush. And again, I'm just kind of dabbing. You can have the tops of the hills either nice and smooth, or you can have them with little kind of trees popping out, the illusion of little, you know, maybe pine trees off in the distance, just kind of peeking their heads over the top of those, over the top of those little hills. Um, and then I just have this one last one over here. And I just wanna, again, make sure that I've got it wicked bright, wicked. See, I told you I was from Massachusetts. Only us people in Massachusetts say the word wicked. Wicked. Um, so we can make sure that you can see the difference right here. I feel like these two are a little bit too close in color. So I'm going to add a little bit of green over here just so I can get these two to kind of look a little bit different from one another. And you can keep playing with it. If you feel like you need to sit and fiddle with it a little bit more, maybe you need yours to dry, you know, and add some more highlights on it or whatever, but you know, you just keep having fun with this. We are going to be using this same brush for the next step, um, but you're gonna wanna wash it and dry it. So once you've got this step all nice and complete and your hills are as alive as you want them to be, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're painting our water. I'm gonna be using blue, green, and white. Um, and I like to use green in my water because water can take on all different kinds of colors. It's meant to look like the reflection of what it's around. So a lot of people associate water being blue because they see it as blue because it's reflecting the sky. So my waterway is in between these mountains and this grassy land, so I'm gonna put some green in it too. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take my large brush, I'm scooping up some blue, I'm gonna put some blue streaks in my water, I'm gonna pick up some green, I'm putting some green streaks in my water, and then I'm gonna pick up white and I'm gonna use white as like my blending color. So I'm gonna let that white kind of help me blend all of these in. And when you get to where the um, land is, just kind of go a little bit slower. You wanna make sure that you get this to get all the way up to that land, but it doesn't have to be a perfectly clean line. Um, even if you run into a little bit of wet paint from the, um, from the mountains, that's okay. You can certainly just kind of work it in there. And this waterway can be whatever you imagine it to be. It could be a river, it could be a pond, it could be a little piece of the ocean, maybe it's like a little inlet of the ocean. It could be really whatever you imagine it to be, just have fun with it. If you want it to you know, be dark like a deep lake, you can have it super dark, I mean, this is, it's a creative process. You let this water be whatever you want it to be. You just wanna make sure that you don't have any unpainted canvas next to the bottom of these hills. So that's why I'm kind of going a little bit slower there just to make sure I've got it all painted in. And then I've got this one little section left here to go. And I like to use those three colors again. So I have varying shades. I've got some dark spots and some light spots 
and now I'm just kind of making sure it's all nice and blended and I've got every little spot. And then I am gonna use this same brush for the next step, but you're gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it. So once you get this water done, you can wash and dry that big brush and get ready for your next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our grass. I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using green, yellow, and white. I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna work my way up. I want my grass to be a little bit darker at the bottom and brighter at the top. So I'm starting with green and yellow on my brush and I'm going to be dotting or dabbing. Whatever you wanna call it is totally fine by me. And you don't always have to pick up green and yellow at the same time. Maybe next time I just pick up green. So that way I've got, again, some light spots and some dark spots and using this dabbing technique will give you this almost textured look and that helps to make more realistic looking grass. So it's a, it's a neat technique that will help you to make your grass look pretty natural without having to do too much work. And then as I get up towards the top where my, where it's gonna be hit by the sun, I'm gonna be using some white along with the green and the yellow. So you'll see how light this is gonna get as it get, goes up towards the top. So I use just green and yellow down at the bottom. And this is meant to be just wild grass. It's meant to be a, a meadow or, you know, some kind of private, you know, grass that's, you know, maybe in the secluded woods or something. Um, so have fun with it. You can make it as bright, as wild as you want. It doesn't have to be, you know, super soft and beautiful like it was just mowed by the by the landscaper, you can make it wild. You can have these little, when you get to the water area, you want that top to be rough. So I'm just taking my brush and making almost like these little prickly marks up at the top. So that way it looks like there's little pieces of grass just kind of popping their head out over the top. And it doesn't have to be a straight line across. You can have, you know, little pieces that are taller than others. You can have, you know, some more wild pieces, but you do want to get the whole thing covered and you want to make sure you don't see any more pencil marks at, by the time this step is done. So even if you have to put a little extra paint over those, over your original line, just make sure that you get it all nice and covered. And then we are going to use this brush for the next step. So once you've got your grass all nice and filled in here, you're gonna wanna wash and dry this brush and you're gonna wanna wash it really, really good. So even if you have to go and clean your cup of water so you get a nice clean brush, you're gonna wanna make sure it's really super clean for the next step. Oh, and don't forget to take a bite of your delicious snack in between. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our sun. Um, so, just before we start, a couple of things. If your canvas is still wet, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you wait for it to dry, or you can always hit it with a blow dryer, but you definitely want your sky to be dry, and you definitely want your brush to be clean, because if you still have some green on your brush, you're gonna end up with a green sun, and we don't really want a green sun, so just make sure your brush is nice and clean. I even went and you know cleaned mine as well, really cleaned it. Um, so the colors that we're going to be using are white and yellow, and it's mostly white. So you don't need a lot of yellow. The yellow is really, really powerful, and um, so you don't need a lot of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a good amount of white on my brush and just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of yellow, not a lot at all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my arc of my sun, I'm gonna go from about here, which would be part way up this hill, to about halfway in this hill. And I'll be, you know, maybe a couple inches away from the top of my canvas. So here I go. I'm just gonna kind of get this on here. And I know that that yellow is really, really powerful. So I'm just gonna kind of keep working this until it's nice and smooth. Um, you don't really need to add 
you probably won't need to add more paint to your brush just kind of keep working it I'm going to bring that yellow a little bit more in towards my land and you don't have to bring it all the way to, all the way into your land itself this is just the the sun if you ever looked right at it which I don't recommend you do um, it's not yellow it's it's white and it casts a yellow glow on the things around it so when you're looking at that you know at pictures and it shows the yellow yellow sun the yellow is the color that it's it's making things glow but the actual center of it is white so I'm actually adding more white to my brush so I can get this to be a little bit lighter in this center area oh, so I have a little bristle that's driving me crazy and then once I've got it and it doesn't even really need to totally touch your hills you can just you know kind of get it to go right near it just be careful of wet paint from your hills um, and then once you've got this area pretty good now we're gonna add the sun rays so how I do that is I'm going to consider this to be my center and all of my rays are gonna come up in that type of diagonal from my center spot I didn't put any extra paint on my brush I'm going to I whatever my remnants are this is just a little delicate kind of step I'm just gonna kind of pull that out like that and I'm gonna keep pulling it out I might end up adding a little bit more yellow to this um, if yours is not as yellow as you want it you can certainly add a little bit more I'm just gonna kind of add this one here and then I again I'm just considering my center point is right here and that's the direction all of my my rays are coming out I'm running out of paint so I'm gonna add just a teeny tiny bit more here and I'm not touching my canvas too hard I'm just lightly kind of um, almost like dusting my canvas I'm not doing too much at all and this is providing me with these really nice long sun rays you can even do like little ones in between they don't all have to be perfectly you know spaced apart you can do shorter ones in between if you wanted to um, and I think just putting my head back for a second here see if I want to add a touch more yellow I might add just a teeny bit more yellow in here so it really reads as a nice glowing sun here and then that's all I'm going to do for that step we are going to use our medium brush for the next step so once you get this sun as brilliant as you want it and maybe it's you know a super happy maybe you're going to draw a happy face in yours later or something but yeah. I'm going to leave mine as is but once you get it like this you can um, put your bristle brush away and get out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we're using our medium round brush. We're gonna be using black paint and we're doing the first layer on our frogs. So the reason I'm using black is because they're gonna kind of look like this is a silhouette. We'll, we'll paint green on them with a little highlight later, but because the sun is way over there and the, it, and the frogs are sitting here, there's no light behind them. So they're gonna be really dark on the back side. So that's why we're gonna do a base coat of black. So I've got my medium brush. Um, in order to make it nice and pointy, I'm gonna just spin it in my paint on the side of my palette. And these frogs are just gonna be a bunch of shapes and you can just kind of follow along with how I'm gonna make them. So I'm gonna make two circles for the heads. One of them's gonna be smaller than the other one. So my first one I'm going to have maybe come right about at the bottom of this hill. I'm just going to kind of come straight down. I'm going to make myself a little circle, uh, maybe like more of an oval. And the bottom part is going to be above the land. So something like this. It's kind of um, the shape or the size of like a quarter, but it's a little bit wider because it's turned into an oval and then I'm going to do another one to the left only a little bit taller and a little bit bigger but you want to make sure they're about an inch away from each other because we need we need to keep room for um, the legs and stuff so we got two ovals one is a little bit bigger than the other they're about maybe an inch apart now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two bumps on the heads these are going to be the eyes so I'm going to put one bump here 
one bump here, one bump here, one bump here, and just make sure the tops of them are rounded, otherwise they'll look like little horns instead of their, their eyeballs. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another kind of circle slash oval underneath. It's gonna touch it, but it's gonna be less uh, wide. So something like this, a little less wide than the head. So maybe this one's more of like a circle shape instead of a oval. And then I'm gonna, and it comes into the grass. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. Again, it's not as wide as the head. Maybe this one's a little on the tall oval side but they can be different sizes, it's okay. It's the beauty of a frog. Now I'm gonna do his knees or her knees. Um, so about halfway down that body, I'm gonna do a little um, bump that goes up um, in a diagonal fashion, something like that. I'm gonna put another one on the other side that's gonna go up like this. So it's kind of like a, uh, an oval, the top, part of it. I'm going to do the same thing for this one here. And this one's obviously going to be bigger because this is a bigger frog. Like that. And I got another one coming up like this. And then I'm going to make some little feet coming off the bottom. So I'm not going to get too tricky with this. I'm just going to put um, where kind of the butt meets the bottom of the leg. I'm just going to do like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And then we're going to switch brushes to the small brush. So once you get your, your frogs and the legs and the feet, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So now what we're doing, we're gonna use our small brush, we're gonna use black paint, and we're doing the same thing that we did for our frogs, but now we're doing it for the fish. And they're gonna be smaller and a little bit more detailed, which is why we're gonna use a smaller brush. I'm gonna be using black paint, so again, I'm gonna take my brush and spin it in the side of my palette to make it nice and pointy. And if you need to, you can add a little bit of water to your paint. That's gonna make it like an ink consistency, and that allows you to make nice, um, smaller lines too. So these fish uh, are kind of imaginary <laughs> fish. I'm just going to show you a couple of different shapes that are going to resemble fish. Uh, you might want to make a shark, you might want to make a dolphin, maybe a Loch Ness monster, I don't know. We're, I'm just going to do something that looks like it's going to jump out of the water. So the first one that I'm going to do is um, probably the most common shape. I'm going to have um, kind of an arced line like that. And then I'm gonna use the, the right side as the pointy tail side and the left side as the mouth side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create like a little open V for the mouth. And then I'm gonna come back and make that tail part a little bit pointy. And then I'll put a little tail fin on here, maybe something like that. Maybe I'll have a little fin coming out here and maybe one coming out here and then I'll just color it in with just black paint. And then the next one I'm gonna do is um, kind of a similar shape fish but he's kind of wiggling a little bit more as he's jumping out of the water. So I'm gonna do um, what would be this top part. I'm gonna have it kind of, oops, I gotta say, I have one more little fish I wanna do, just make sure I save room for it. So I've got this one maybe coming like this, and then it's got a little flip up, cause it's, I don't know, contorting as it's coming out of the water. And then I've got that little V for the mouth, showing it's open, and then I've got the bottom part of its body going into the tail and maybe the tail little fin is coming out like that. Maybe it's got a little fin coming off like this, or a flipper if you're doing a little dolphin. I think dolphins have flippers, maybe. 
I don't know. Maybe they're fins. I don't, I don't know what dolphins have. Um, and then I'm gonna just color it in black. And then I'm gonna do one more who's a really doing kind of like a jump nose dive into the water. Again, it's kind of the same type of shape um, where this one's gonna be, he's really, he's jumping, jumping, jumping. I'm gonna do the little V shape for the mouth. This one's a little bit smaller. And then, oops, make sure my brush is pointy enough here. And that's gonna be the tail. Gonna come in here. This is why you need a small brush to do this. He almost looks like a little eel or something. I'm gonna put his tail coming out here. I'm gonna have a fin coming up here. I'm gonna close his mouth a little bit so the mouth doesn't overtake it. And that's all I'm gonna do for my little fish. So you can certainly have as much fun with yours as you want, closing this mouth a little bit too. And we are going to switch back to that medium brush for the next step. So after you get this done, you can wash and dry the medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're gonna do for the next step is we are um, gonna be using our medium brush and we're making like the tall, wild grass, the overgrown grass that you find, you know, on the near, near a waterway, near a pond, somewhere for our frogs to kind of hide and, and kind of rest and, and wait for the sun to peek its head over the, over the mountains. Um, so I'm gonna be using a bunch of colors. I'm gonna be using black, I'm gonna use red, I'm gonna use green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with black to make dark, like silhouetted or shadowed grass. I'm gonna use some red so they pop out in front of everything else. And then I'll use my green, yellow, and white to make it look more like grass. Um, I'm gonna be doing mine primarily over here on the sides, but I'm also gonna put a couple little pieces behind my frogs so they kind of look like they're just hiding on the side of, of the pond. So here I go. I'm gonna take my medium brush. I'm using a little bit of black paint. This is gonna kind of start my, my roadmap where I want these pieces of grass. So I'm gonna do these tall ones over in this side to get them to kind of go up over here. What this is doing is it's giving us um, like something in our foreground or the grass that's really close to us. And I don't do a lot of black because it's really dark and I don't want it to overpower my painting. So I just definitely wanna do just a few pieces Maybe, you know, I'm just kind of flicking my brush up a little bit, maybe a couple pieces back here. And it's okay if you hit your frog a little bit, but you don't want to totally hide them. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of red. Not a lot, just a little bit. I'm not going to wash my brush. And I'm going to do some more little pieces throughout here. And again, I'm just kind of doing carefree kind of pieces. You might want to come further down here if you want to. Um, I'm just kind of keeping mine a little bit on the left. Um, and then a little bit on the right over here. And again, I don't hold my brush tight. Um, so this way it gives me um, more of like this arcing kind of motion instead of straight up and down pieces of grass. This is meant again to look like wild grass. Maybe there's little cattails at the end of it or something. Um, now I'm not washing my brush. I'm gonna start picking up green yellow and white at the same time. Not a lot, but enough. So when I start to do this other grass, you're gonna be able to see it. And I'm doing it right in front of the, um, the black and the red. So this way it all looks like they're just growing together. They live together in the woods. I don't cover up my water 100%, but I'm definitely making sure that, I, um, that you can see these pieces of grass in front of it. And again, you might call it grass, you might call it weeds, you might call it, you know, whatever you want to. All I know is that it's the, it's the pieces that have not been mowed by any man. Um, and I wanted to kind of get it to um, disguise the back of where my um, little froggies are, because I don't want my frogs to just look like they're 
floating there. So this grass behind them helps to um, ground them, you know, put them behind something. You could, I suppose, put shadows um, or something else behind them, but I'm opting to just put this wild kind of grass. Um, I'm going to put some some of the brighter colors over here, green, yellow, and white. And again, this could be as wild as you want it or as subtle as you want it. Um, you could even put a couple little pieces coming up in through here if you wanted to really add some great dimension to it. Just a couple of little pops here and there will totally um, help achieve that. And I'm just going to do a couple more little little pieces here make sure you can see them and then I'm going to use my small brush for the next step so once you get done putting your wild you know woodsy kind of grass on here you can put this medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small one and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're finishing our frogs I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I am going to be using green as my second coat on all of the frog. Um, I know that when this green dries, because it's got black behind it, it's gonna be a really nice, dark, deep green. We could have used black and green as one coat earlier. Um, but I like doing this method because I think what happens is we get some more vibrant areas and duller areas, um, which I think looks more natural. Um, and it's much easier to cover the um, stuff that was underneath better. And if you have some areas that are not totally covered with green, that's okay too. Um, but you do want to make sure that the entire frog is painted with something. So if you have some areas that uh, have missed paint, then just make sure you, you paint that in. I'm going to go and do the other one. I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm just kind of doing a thin coat on top of it. So it makes you understand that it is a green frog. Um, wait, there's other colors of frogs too, I guess. They don't all have to be green. There's... I think there's red frogs and there's blue frogs. There's all kinds of colors, colored frogs, but we're gonna do the traditional New England green frog that lives out in my pond. <laughs> um, so if you choose to do another color, hey, have fun with it. Um, and then once I've got them green, what I'm gonna do is a highlight because my sun is on the other side. So I'm just putting yellow and white on my brush at the same time and I'm in essence going to outline the frogs and it's predominantly going to be top right. So you could outline the whole frog if you wanted to but if you wanted to look a little bit more realistic you if you leave some of the bottom left not outlined it'll look a little bit more realistic. So here I go. I've got yellow and white and I'm going to just kind of go slow I'm reloading my brush because I feel like I didn't have enough on it that time. And just a little outline there, yellow and white. I reload my brush often so I don't have to press too hard. So I can just use the tip of my brush to get that outline on there. Uh, maybe I've got the top of this leg that's going to be outlined, maybe a little bit of the face there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. I don't have much to do on this step. I just wanna make sure that if I can get the right area. And I have a shaky hand. So you might notice my, my pinky kind of rests on the canvas every now and again when I'm doing these small details. That helps me out because I know a lot of us have not sturdy hands um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We just, if we want to have a little line, we have to figure out how to adapt. And my way is to hang on to my easel or hang on to my canvas. Um, I think I want a little highlight on this leg here. Like maybe it's being shown. And maybe a little one here. Maybe his little cheeks got a little bit on there. You know, just something where the sun is kissing over there. And then we're going to wash and dry this brush and use the same brush for the next step. 
All right, so what I'm doing for the next step is I'm doing um, the same thing to my fish that I just did to my frogs, my colors, which is gonna be finishing my fish. I'm using my small brush. I'm using red, yellow, and white. So I've got red paint, and I'm really just kind of coloring them in with red paint. You could decorate yours whatever way you wanted. If you wanted polka dotted fish, if you wanted striped fish, if you wanted blue dolphins, if you wanted, you know, a checkered Loch Ness monster, you can really have fun with this and make it whatever you want it to be. And then once I got, once I get the red colored in, I am going to be doing the same kind of highlight that I did on my frogs. So again, I'm not using a lot of paint when it comes to coloring in um, the, the red color on them, but if you do use a lot, maybe yours end up brighter than mine do. And again, that's, that's a visual preference. I'm going for mine are kind of in a silhouetted way, um, but if you want yours nice and bright, feel free to do so. I'm adding some yellow and white to my brush, and I'm gonna put a little bright highlight on the top of them, because that's where the sun would be hitting them the most. So top, because they are directly underneath that sun. Maybe one on that little lip right there. Lip. Do fish have lips? Hmm, fish lips. Wait, they've got to, because I've heard of fish lips before. So you can have lips on your fish. Um, again, yellow and white is my highlight combination, and because the sun is directly above them, I'm putting my highlight on the top side of these pieces. Maybe one goes here, and then we have one little step to go, and it's going to be with the same brush. So once you've got your highlights on your fish, you can wash and dry this little brush, and you're ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are using our small brush to make our fish splash. Um, I'm gonna be using black, blue, and white, and I don't use a lot of black, but that's where I'm starting. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of black, and I'm. if you have more room underneath mine, you can do more of the part where they jump out of the water, but I'm just gonna have this one jumping out of the water um, where you can see the little pool that it came out of. So I'm gonna take this and I'm almost gonna do like a little spiral for the area of the water that it jumped out of. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just gonna pick up some blue and I'm gonna have that blue kind of as a darker color around it. And I can also use this blue to act as like part of a splash from maybe this one is coming out in through here. When you're doing these splashes, the trick is you want to have dark and light in order for it to um, look realistic, like it's got three dimensions to it. So that's why I'm starting with the darker colors. And then here, I'm just going to kind of put like it's going in that direction. And then maybe this one's just got some, we don't know where this one's coming from. So we just did a little bit coming out of that. I'm just gonna wash, wipe my brush on my paper towel and I'm picking up white. And now white, I'm gonna just add these little streaks in this little pool where it jumped out of right here. And then I'm gonna do white like polka dots as my splashes. So you can get them to go in a, in a direction. I'm just kind of dotting lightly to get these little splashes coming out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do little bits over on this one. And I'm not pressing very hard. That one I press a little bit too hard in my opinion, but the key is, you know, if you find yourself making too, too many, you might wanna wipe your brush off because maybe you have too much paint on your brush, but I really just have a teeny tiny bit on the tip of my brush and I'm just kind of adding these little little bits of splashes going out. And then when you get done doing your splashes, we have a final step, which will be done with this small brush, and it's the final step to any painting. So you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the final step. 
All right, so the final step to any painting is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint today. And I think I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom left. I'm gonna sign mine with my initials. You could certain, I, I don't know if I told you I'm using black, but um, I'm using black. I'm signing my initials. You could sign your first name. You could sign the date. You could make a symbol if you wanted to. Um, but that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you loved your cookies or your snack. Um, and I totally look, I hope you love your painting too. And I look forward to painting and eating cookies with you again sometime.